Hello, Mr. Report newsletter and Tutor Group subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today is December 30th, 2020. And I'm doing my best to keep my word and get you this final Mr. Report update. This is number 20. Newsletter number 20 for December 30th, 2020. It gives a total of 25 newsletters that are in the 2020 mystery report folder as we speak and those that are you guys that have subscribed just keep using your 2020 dropbox folder link to access these these newsletters and uh you're going to receive a 2021 dropbox folder link during the month of january moving forward this newsletter program is all about helping people see god's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood, testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1-1 through Revelation, and everywhere in between. <clears throat> Once you see them, this, the three witnesses, it changes everything. So for those who are unaware, my Black Star YouTube channel is uh, has been deleted, and some of the links here and there are not working. I went to the website, for example, and I imported every video from YouTube over to brand new tube, thinking I was importing them, that they were backed up, just in case this, because I knew this was going to happen. So I went to brand new tube, and it says that they've been all been deleted. So it's probably going to be February before I can get everything caught up. If you go to the website so far these one two three four these three videos these links have, have been fixed up because these videos I was in the process of doing this whenever i first got my warnings and then got onto the brand new tube and imported these two thinking they were going to be backed up so if anybody has a copy of any video that's on this website if you downloaded it you have it on file please go to wetransfer.com wetransfer.com and transfer that to tarot at tarot03.com just send it appreciate it very 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 much and then because uh, the way it stands right now all the videos that all the video links from YouTube that are on this page that I thought were backed up all of these all gone so I'm going to have to and whenever I get through all the notification pardon me in January because that comes first then I'm gonna to have to go down and see if I can find these videos this one right uh, here I believe is uploaded to the uh, bright on channel so if I, if the more that I can find and put here the less fewer of them that I need to make okay so my apologies for all of that I thought up my my butt was covered and it just wasn't that has not happened to me before like that okay so this newsletter number 20 this newsletter has more commentary than any other newsletter by far this is uh gary wrote me you see back in november and just have not had time had not had time had uh you finally have time now to but this that's how long ago this commentary was written and then gary wrote me back and so this has been added to and then Gary wrote me back on the 20th and we got uh, we got more information here and then Gary wrote me again <clears throat> pardon me you can see Gary's on the ball I mean, he's reading and he's asking really good questions Isaiah 14 14 so this has been added just this morning so I was planning on making this report then Gary wrote me again so I wrote this report before making this video and then um, Jim wrote from Ireland, surviving the Black Star in Ireland, and he's Bible guy too, he's asking questions. And then when you go on down, then this is from October the first when Karen wrote me our rapture, the seven seals, rightly dividing the word of truth. So you got more. I mean, there's just tons of information in this that uh, in this newsletter. I'm gonna try to keep this to a half an hour to 45 minutes, and we'll get to see how far that we can get. Christ body members, kingdom disciples, and God's purpose for the ages. And um, you, most of you guys know me as like the more of the science type 
right? And Project Black Star and Gloom and Doom and things like that. But this is my calling. God showed me this since the time I was a teenager. I'm from a family of ministers, by the way. And once God so showed me this, then I was arguing with a family of ministers and my cousins, not just my my uh, uncles, but my cousins now took over their churches. So from a lo very large family, my father had uh, nine kids in their family, and most of them were preachers. Only one girl. And so this is... This, this is my book, The Mystery Explained, is my legacy book, or it's my whatever you want to call it. It's the, uh, it's the big work from my lifetime here. God showed me. This is his stuff. I cannot take credit for anything that's in The Mystery Explained. God showed it to me. I'm just, it, it's all God's stuff, and I'm, sh I'm just sharing it with you. Just God gave he tapped me on the shoulder and said, here, son, psh, you can see this. Now go share it with other people, and uh, for three years... I mean, he, I was, he was showing me, showing me, showing me. I was going to Bible study every Friday night with the, with a group of people in my youth when I was younger. And then I realized the mystery of iniquity. God is showing me this stuff, but then I, the people that I'm trying to share it with can't see it. And so I became angry. Three years, I didn't write one word for God. It took me that long to realize that this is the way it's supposed to be. Mystery of iniquity, that's the way it works. The deluding influence forces them to believe what's false. That's what denominationalism does to people. That's why there's over 20,000 different denominations. People argue like crazy about it. They all believe they're right. And there's only one truth. And you see it by seeing the three witnesses. When you see this three witnesses, spirit, blood, and water, it exp explains everything. And it's been the joy. The reason that this was published, finally, I wrote it in 2005. It was only published in 2015 because I was sharing the PDF with people. And they were writing me back saying they wanted to buy the book. And they were they wrote me back and said that they bought printer paper and they printed out the PDF version themselves. So I'm like, man, people seeing it, God's letting people see it, then it's my duty. And I spent the money that I'll never get back from publishing. I've made some mistakes in getting the publishing done. Spent way too much probably, but 80 color-coded diagrams. And you have when you use these type of diagrams, 80 of them in a book, you have to use the thickest, best paper. So it's $66 for the Mystery Explained. You can get a uh, paperback version, I think, for about 35 bucks, something like that. So that's a little background on what's going on with this. This is the love of my life right here. God, God showed me this, these things. I can see it. I can see it by the Spirit. And it's just a great thing. So Gary writes, thank you for, uh, oh, hi, Gary. Thank you for writing. And you wrote. Why is John, this is Gary writing, when he's writing, he's reading my book, um, yellow, white, and blue, and I am yellow, red, and blue in figure two. What am I missing with the color arrangement? Okay, so this is the diagram that we're talking about. This depicts God's infinite realm. This is the realm that we come from. This is the only realm that is real. Heaven and earth are created. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And this is the way things begin. Very simply. It's one of the first diagrams in the mystery explained. In the beginning, God created. God created the heaven and the earth. And this is the key to unlocking God's true Bible code. Right here. Spirit, blood, and water. And the thing to realize, heaven of Genesis 1-1, when you take the single verse of Genesis 1-1 and you unfold it, it becomes three verses of John 1-1. John 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning was the Word, heaven, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, because God and His Word are one and the same in the infinite realm right there right now God and his word same thing but God asked his word to do something God says word go over there and incarnate and make Adam inside yourself so the the correct diagram is actually going to be an egg with an infinite shell with the white of the of the egg and the yolk of the egg contained in, on the inside there's a diagram of that in the mystery explained 
So this diagram transforms into this diagram. You can still see the singularity here where we're gods. But then heaven and earth. My father who art in heaven. My father who art in heaven. So many people think that my father who art in heaven is God. He's the spirit witness of the word. The Son is the blood witness of the Word. The Holy Spirit is the water witness of the Word. And the three are into the one. 1 John 5, verse 8. The heavens, heaven, and earth have the same pattern. Spirit, blood, water. So the original singularity of Genesis 1-1 is a singularity, earth. But it's broken into heavens, heaven, and earth. So that's Genesis 1, 6-8. The waters above the firmament the water is below the firmament, and the firmament is called heaven, or the expanse, depending on your translation. It's called heaven. So you have a heaven of Genesis 1-1, that's the highest heaven, and you have heaven of Genesis 1-8, that is heaven of this creation. Heaven of this creation. So the Lamb of God stands in the heaven of this creation. The Lamb of God is the Word incarnate in our universe, who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus Christ incarnating on the earth is the incarnation of the Lamb of God, who is the incarnation of heaven, who is the incarnation of God's word in the infinite realm, where God is a whole lot of incarnating going on. Okay, so by the time you get to the end of the book, you see more complicated diagrams like this. God, heaven, earth. The kingdom of his beloved Son is heaven. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. There they are. So when Christ was raised above all the heavens, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8, 8 through 10, he's raised above all the heavens of this universe and is seated at the right hand of God. He's placed right here. The face of the man is Jesus Christ. So when John in Revelation is standing over here and looking across, he sees the Lamb of God, he sees the face of the man, and he sees the three living creatures go with him. The three living creatures, he sees them as four living creatures because the face of the man, he, he assumes, is one of them. But what he's actually doing is he's looking through all these realms from this perspective. God's looking back at him through God who is looking back in this direction. So the question, why is John color-coded differently than you are? So you're a member of Christ's body. You're baptized into Christ. You're seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Guess what? The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is Christ Jesus. So you're seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus here above all the heavens of this creation. That means you're completed, you're finished. So the angel half, your angel half was taken from the heavens and rejoined with your man half that's down here in the earth to make you a citizen of the Lamb's body here which makes you a member of Christ's body here. Remember, Christ's body is a member of the Lamb. So in Revelation, when you see the, the Lamb in the center of the throne, we're already in Him. People think they're the 144,000. They think that we're the, the, the priests that are on the sea of glass. We're not. We're members of the Lamb's body. We have been in Him since Revelation 1.10. The trumpet sounded off behind John. is the same trumpet of First. Thessalonians 4, 16, and 1 Corinthians 15, 52. The final trumpet, that's the trumpet that sounds off behind John. Almost everybody misses that trumpet in Revelation 1, 10. That's our trumpet. They want to bring us into the trumpets that come along later. That's at the end of the age. Nothing to do with us. The final trumpet's the singular thing, and it ends this dispensation of God's grace, and it happens at the time of the rapture. Okay, so... The reason that Peter, John, and James, are they have this color coding is because they have not been reconnected with their angel half. They serve on the sea of glass, and there's an invisible sea on the back side that you only can understand through the types. Their angel half. I've got a diagram of that. Okay, Paul makes a statement that we are going to judge the world and the angels. Because we judge the man half and the angel half, they're two halves of the same whole. The ones that are judged worthy join us in Christ Jesus. The ones that are judged unworthy, they go back into the invisible sea and into the sea of glass where they are a kingdom of priests. They provide intercession for heavenly hosts 
coming before the throne of the Lamb. Nobody actually, no heavenly host actually talks to the Lamb directly. They work through their intercessor, which who's like an attorney, kind of priest providing intercession. That's who makes their case. The Lamb speaks to the priest. They find out what the deal is, and they are judged. Then we are the ones that judge the world and the angel. This is the Lamb, the members of his body, right up, right up here. So this shows the body of Christ. This shows the kingdom, prophetic kingdom bride and the world that's joining the kingdom bride so they can eventually join us in Christ Jesus. We're here by obeying the gospel. Peter, John, and James get here by works. Marriage Supper of the Lamb through works. Revelation chapter 19, start at verse 5. They're cleaning their garments and scrubbing and scrubbing and they're trying to obtain what we get for free. That's what makes them jealous. Okay. So, Though we're doing that work of judging the world and the angels as members of the Lamb's body right here. Why we also have membership over here. So Peter, John, and James on the Sea of Glass, they have to go through the marriage supper of the Lamb to look like us and then walk right into the Lamb. They're different. They're water witnesses. Priests are water witnesses. Peter, John, and James, water witnesses. They obeyed the gospel of the kingdom, the water gospel. Water, baptism for the, for the remission or forgiveness of sins. That's what we're, that's the way that our sins are forgiven through Christ shed blood. We are the water blood witnesses. Peter, John, and James are the water witnesses. Two totally different dispensations. That's why there's different colors. We have the red in us because we're blood witnesses. Peter, John, and James do not have the red color in them because they're still water witnesses. And the last three to join us in Christ Jesus at the end of all the ages, guess who? The first from Matthew chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. Peter, John, and James. They're the first that are the last. So uh, is there there's a uh, meaning to the different colors? Yes. Each spirit witness is yellow, gold. Each blood witness is red. Each water witness is blue. That's the same color code that you're going to see throughout the entire book, The Mystery Explained. Here's David on the earth doing what the Lamb's doing in heaven, who's doing what God's doing in Christ Jesus. These things are happening simultaneously because on earth, as it is in heaven, as it is in an infinite realm, that's what's happening here. And that's going to be explained in more detail in Gary's third letter, in the third response that I give him. So I say, let's move forward to the new heaven, the highest heaven of Genesis 1-1, where God is seated in his Son. And the new earth below, where the Lamb contains the body of Christ in the center of the throne. Revelation 7 7 in New Jerusalem. You and I are completed living souls with our man half, water witness, and our angel half, spirit witnesses, reunited and joined together. So, this is what I just explained to you. David's doing. He's the king. He's the king. He's the king. Three kings. They're doing the same things. The lamb's doing what God's doing. David's doing what the lamb's doing. They're restoring all things on earth as it is in heaven, as it is in the infinite realm. Okay, then this is my statement I was also making. Peter, Peter, John, and James will be the last kingdom disciples, priests, intercessors to join us in the Lamb of God. As kingdom disciples joining us in the Lamb by works characterized by the marriage supper of the Lamb. These are all the things that I just said to you above. So, here's wisdom concerning how God is using Christ's body members, rulers, kings, judges, blood witnesses, living souls. And kingdom disciples, priests, intercessors, water witnesses like women, to teach his heavenly wisdom to the heavenly authorities, characterized as the whole purpose of God. Acts 20, 20 through 24. Read through the verses from these passages for setting the stage and preparation for reading the first four verses of Matthew 10 with focus on protos. That's the first. Signed to Peter, then read Acts 13 from the beginning, where Paul is taking his gospel of grace of God to the Gentiles until we get to these verses. Let it be known to you, brothers, fellow Jews, uh, meeting in, um, on the Sabbath, that through him forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you, and through him everyone who believes is freed from all things from which you could not be freed through the law of Moses. Therefore, see 
that the things spoken of the prophets do not come do not um come upon you look you scoffers be astonished and perish for i am accomplishing a work in your days a work which you will never believe though someone should describe it to you so then read to the end of the chapter and see that some of the jews obeyed our gospel but paul took our gospel to the gentiles saying we turn to the gentiles the pivot point appears in verse 45 but when the jews saw the crowds they were filled with jealousy and began contradicting the things spoken by paul and were blaspheming paul drives the point home in romans 10 19 and 11 7 to 11 the most um that most believe pertains to peter john and james being among those chosen while the rest the pharisees the lawyers the scribes were hardened the fact is that all Israel will be saved, but by works. Having insufficient knowledge for recognizing that God's eternal purpose, the purpose for the ages, includes making them jealous. Everybody that's a Jew that's born in this earth has an issue with God that pertains to idolatry in the infinite realm. So for, for Christians, for example, members of Christ's body, the female wears a covering over her head because of the angels. Because of the difference between spirit witnesses and water witnesses. Heaven stands between the angels and men. So the veil of authority, the veil that the woman wears over her head is a veil of authority. Of a spirit witness over a water witness is the same veil that's between the earth and heaven. It's there for a reason. But all Jews have a covering. They all have that covering. The exception is, see, the man that's the member of Christ's body. The woman uses the man like her angel. That's why she's supposed to stay quiet and in an entire submission and receive the word from her angel, who's her man. She's the water witness servant. Kingdom disciples are in the same situation. In fact, all water witnesses are. So Peter, John, James, Cornelius, and all the kingdom disciples join them on the sea of glass before the throne will serve the lamb for ages and ages and ages, thinking that they are the big chickens in the chicken house. Christ's body members will be will work be working to judge the world, man halves, and their angel halves, to receive great rewards at the end of every age, to grow larger, becoming more mature and complete with stone filled breastplates, ephods, giving us access to the inner chambers of the heavenly temple. Kingdom disciples joining us in the Lamb via the marriage supper of the Lamb will only know to be jealous and angry once they complete the marriage supper ceremony, to then walk in the Lamb where their man and angel halves are rejoined. In that moment, the kingdom disciple will look up to see God's body, um, Christ's body members, Christ's body members in our glory, for the realization to dawn that they will be little chickens in God's chicken house for the duration. That's really going to make them jealous god's heavenly authorities because it's gentiles the goy that are being placed above them that's part of god's plan god's heavenly authorities overseeing these things from the consummation of the ages to the very end will learn the lessons through our church that's ephesians 3 8, uh, 8 through 11 that god's grace is infinitely greater than all the works of men and angels combined the bottom line here is that the souls incarnate on this planet, the sons of Israel, have idolatry issues in the, with the Almighty and His Word in God's infinite realm, where Peter, John, and James are the first that are in rea that in reality are the last souls to join us in the Lamb, in Christ Jesus by works. Therefore, the different color arrangement you see for John will remain to the ages of the ages which is translated forever and ever uh, from the Greek. The aorist a tense that's used here, it uh, denotes per perpetuity. So I characterize that as to the ages of the ages. The color arrangement that you, um, for you change in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus the moment you obey the gospel. The new inner man in you, that's Christ in you, is like baby Jesus in the manger, where you are your own universe. With heavens your spirit, heaven your soul, earth your body. Feed the new inner man with spiritual things from God, from the Pauline epistles, that's living and active. 
laid out for you in the mystery explained where God's word is the spirit witness and your enlarging red folder is the blood witness testifying to Christ enlarging in heaven in your soul some of you are not going to know what that means so you're given my book the mystery explained it's blue for a reason as a water witness it's like a priest God's word is the spirit witness something's going to grow out of that that's going to be your red folder where you're going to highlight you have the instructions in the mystery explained how to do that that's going to continue to grow it could become bigger than the Bible and my book combined it's going to continue to enlarge along with your knowledge so blessed are those seeing these things for the ages to come but more blessed are those seeing these things living through this evil age in the valley of the shadow of darkness chosen by God to see his wisdom hidden very much in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit blood and water be of good cheer brother because soon we stand together in great glory looking down on the toys of this earth like a dream blessings in Christ so that's the uh, the original article that I put together in answer to Gary back in November and then yeah, we, were, we went through this part then Gary wrote me back and uh, he says wow thanks your explanation overwhelmed me beyond words and then I write back and say, thank you for writing. Practically all professing Bible prophecy experts mix Christ's water ministry with Christ's blood ministry. So you can see the water ministry and his the grace doctrine is his blood ministry without knowing the difference. That is what the mystery of iniquity slash lawlessness and denominationalism are all about. The reason that the truth taught in God's word is a rare commodity and so precious try try to imagine the magnitude of error perpetuated by well the RC church is one example by choosing Peter as their first Pope which regulates Russia which relegates the steward of the dispensation of God's grace to the last position in their minds so Paul is thought to be like a supplement to what the kingdom disciples are already doing when the kingdom disciples are teaching kingdom doctrine has nothing to do with us today. We're supposed to separate, rightly divide, cut straight the word of God, 1 Timothy 2.15. The Greek is to cut straight. Which means to separate God's word into a spirit witness, blood witness, and a water witness. And the blood witness is for us. The whole Bible is written to us I'm sorry, the whole Bible is written for us, for what went to Israel, what went to the kingdom bride in the, the kingdom New Testament, and in the Pauline epistles, what's written to us. The whole Bible is for us, but Paul's epistles are, that's God's personal mail written to us. That's the active part of God's living word is in the Pauline epistles. And Hebrews Revelation, including the four gospels, is going to be, is written to the kingdom disciples living in the day of the Lord that's coming. Elijah's going to preach the gospel of the kingdom. If you go to Matthew 24, 14, it says, And this gospel of the kingdom will go to the whole world, and then the end will come. Elijah's going to preach the gospel of the kingdom. There will be no more preachers on the planet once we're raptured to preach God's word. God must send the preacher because the Holy Spirit's incarnate in him. So Christ incarnate inside of us is different than what the, that's the, Mystery among the Gentiles, Christ in you, the hope of glory, Colossians 1.27. Our church being his body. Peter, John, and James are members of the kingdom of bride. They're betrothed. They're not even wives, according to the tradition. They, once you're betrothed, you give your word, then that makes you a concubine. So there's a difference between a bride that has, that's where the words have been given back and forth, the betrothing words, and the wife that has gone through the marriage supper of the Lamb, which the that's the case here or, or gone through the actual ceremony so Peter warns about distorting the wisdom given him that's Paul the mystery in 2nd Peter 3 14 through 16 saying that they are distorting this wisdom to their own destruction the deluding influence forces them to believe what is false all the days of their lives and anyone deluded by God's deluding influence is deluded indeed that's why you can argue with people, argue people back and forth, agree to disagree or whatever you want to do, and they're never going to see it. Set yourself on fire, tell them the truth. They're not going to be able to believe it because the deluding influence will not allow them to. 
That's what me messed me up for three years till I realized God hides his wisdom from everybody else. He shows it ex exclusively to his sons that obey our gospel. And then you have to be chosen among the, the mature to see it. The babes in Christ, they're not going to see it. That's the way it goes. You guys tell me your maturity level by the questions you ask. If you're wondering how that works, think about your children and when, the, when you're going to explain sex to them. Is it going to be three when they're three? No. You're going to be able to tell by the questions they're asking you how much to give them, how much rope to give them, but not enough to hang themselves when they're 10 or something, right? That comes when they're, you know, a little older and they're asking the right questions. Then you know, you can tell the development of your children by the questions that are asking you. So God trained me as a minister to hear those things coming forth. And then that tells me what you can see and what you cannot see. What, 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 where the light needs to be shown on the path so that you can find your way, pretty much, spiritually. Okay, so then... Um, you are blessed by God for having the ability to see his wisdom because God chooses his sons to reveal these things, giving us spiritual eyes to see, which is what having the mind of Christ is all about. Having the mind of Christ makes me a better scientific type researcher. It allows me to see myself, you guys, the creation, differently than the average bear and park ranger. See, everything has connected. And connected with the earth and the heaven and the infinite realm. Having the mind of Christ, very, very important to my research and study. God took me through the building of the foundation with the Mystery Explained, developed over decades before doing the 9-11 investigation, before doing Project Black Star investigation and many of these other investigations too, many that you haven't heard about. So now perhaps you can see why preparing physically and spiritually are so vitally important to me so we can earn the greatest heavenly rewards for good deeds done in the body or in the flesh some among us are truly members of Christ's body preparing uh, being prepared to judge the world and the angels while some are going to into the day of the Lord with Elijah coming to restore all things then some among us are called to be heavenly citizens for whom Peter John and James etc will intercede and we judge as members of the Lamb's body from the center of the throne the Survivor Group program has always been for those we leave behind, as these works help God to demonstrate that we are indeed sons of the day, or children of the light, from 1 Thessalonians 5, 1-5, seeing the coming destruction and doing everything to help others. By the way, God will reveal only so much to His sons through Bible study and prayer. The big door is open once we dedicate ourselves to opening doors for others. That is so important, so important, so important. Locking yourself in a room and reading everything that I've written about Scripture for the decades is only going to get you so far. It's whenever you open doors for other people to see it, that God opens doors for you to be able to see things more deeply. So then, uh, looking at my time, go a little, we can go a little bit more. This is from December the 20th. It says, thank you, I, and I see that you, I wrote and say that I, I see, Gary, that you are reading. You're actually doing the work. Very, very good. And, um... So on the 20th that he wrote, on page 265 of your book, The Mystery Explained, section 3, Christ's baptism into the earth, you write, The God of this world will be judged and cast into the lake of fire with Hades, which opens the heart of this earth for becoming the tabernacle of our living God. So as, so also, uh, you also wrote just above it on page 264, the key to properly, to properly visualize Christ's true meaning is contained in the phrase, heart of the earth. View the earth as a macrocosm of every individual person on this planet, the special bowl place in the very center to house the spirit of the Almighty or Satan. Christ dwells in you and the fullness of deity in him because of the basic anatomy shared by all macro, micro mystery sets of this universe. Paradise within this earth is a mirror reflection of the sea of glass before the throne of Lamb of the Lamb in heaven above, with the bottomless pit holding the inverted position in the center of the throne, but within this earth. And those of you that just got exposed to the mystery explained, these words are probably not going to mean a darn thing to you. They will as you grow bigger. The, 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 
Christ in you. It's like a baby in a manger. Eyes just barely open. You keep feeding that baby, that new inner man, from the Pauline epistles. Read them every single day. You have the instructions of the mystery explained what to do. Underlining personal pronouns and things. And that little baby is going to grow strong. And there's going to be a battle. Whenever the baby in you, Christ in you, grows large enough to actually fight with the, with the flesh. That's the older you. There's going to be a battle. And then victory. And up and onward from there, God keeps opening up doors, opening up doors. Then you can see into people differently. You can see into the creation differently. So I'm assuming at this point, so my thoughts here that I seek to clear. What is literally happening with Christ in Hades at this point? So I'm assuming that at this point refers to the end of the age. One problem that we have in our communication of Scripture is that we, we, trans, uh, we uh, define terms differently, which creates semantics issues. So we, when, I'm, when you're thinking heaven and I'm thinking heaven and we're thinking different things, we cannot have a communication. Whenever I'm thinking gospel, the gospel of the grace of God, and you're thinking the gospel of the kingdom, or you don't know the difference, then we cannot have good communication. So that's why building the foundation is very, very important. Then we're all defining the word church the same way. Our church, our mystery church, separated from the other churches. Okay, and our gospel, the grace of God, that's our gospel, ours, that makes us members of Christ's body. Not the gospel of the kingdom, that's something else. That brings kingdom bride members, priests, intercessors to the the bride of Christ. So I'm assuming that, that at this point refers to the end of the age when the prophecies of Revelation are being fulfilled. Hades and death are emptied for the judgment and thrown into the lake of fire. Then when asking about Christ, the anointed of God, Christ Jesus is the incarnation of God's word. This is what I was explaining earlier. One with God in his infinite realm. So he's there now. Nothing wrong with God's word. God and his word are the same thing in the infinite realm. It's the incarnation of God's word that's in heaven. That needs restoring. Because it was broken. God broke it into the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Son is going to enlarge to become the word again. The Father and the Holy Spirit are going to go away. Even though that sounds like blasphemy to a lot of you. Where do you think that my Father who art in heaven is in Genesis 1-1? Where is he? That's right. He's in heaven with the Son and the Holy Spirit as a singularity, the Word. So the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are temporal, temporary. Eventually the Son's going to enlarge and overcome both of them to become the Word again. That's why the Father, my Father who art in heaven, gives all power to judge to the Son. He's the only one that's going to be left at the end. All blood witnesses, whether it's heaven of this creation, whether it's the Son of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, your soul, they all testify for the original singularity always that's the way it works that's why all power and authority is given to the son because he's the only one remaining at the end there's no more no such thing as my father art in heaven anymore so that's what i'm explaining to you right in this section that's right here then does the lord cast the hell part of hades only into the lake of fire and retain the paradise portion or does he cast the entire Hades into the lake of fire and set up a completely new tabernacle in its place. I'm thinking the hell part is what goes in the lake of fire. I go, yes, Hades' hell is thrown into the lake of fire, with death being united with the devil, the beast, and the false prophet for all the ages to come. So another thought. When the Lord incarnates into souls or locations, when the Lord incarnates into souls or locations, as he has done in each of us, and dwells there, I get a mental picture or carbon copy of him being made and that copy incarnates in each of us and other places that he dwells. Is that thought correct? Is that, is, is that thought a correct analogy for what is happening? I said, when you say done in each of us, and I'm assuming you mean inside Seventh-day people called to God via our gospel. Seventh-day people having a part in Adam's recent incarnation are tethered, connected to heaven of Genesis 1-1. That is an almost infinite realm containing this universe, all things from Colossians 1-17. The six-day people from Genesis 1-26-28, those are the Chinese, the Aborigines, uh, the Aborigines, American Indians, native, naked uh, natives out in the jungle, 
They're all beardless. They're all, unless they have Seventh-day people in them, they're all RH positive exclusive. They've been around for a long, long, long time. That's why they're talked about in Genesis 1, 26 and 28. But Adam's descendants began in Genesis 4 because he was put into skins. He and Eve were put into skins in Genesis 3, 21. That analogy carries over to Elijah and to John the Baptist. All right? They're animal skins. But that we that are Seventh-day people, that's where negative blood comes from, by the way. Then we have a part in Adam's recent incarnation. Because he's incarnated before, lots of times before. This place has been around for a long, 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 long time. This is his recent incarnation, and this is where the gods come from, from the infinite realm. We're here to be judged. Hebrews 9.27 We're standing in God's courtroom in the infinite realm right now. All these ages from the heaven and the earth take place in the flash of a single instant from our perspective in the infinite realm. So the sixth day people are tethered to heaven of Genesis 1.8 uh, with destinies tied directly to this universe where incarnate hosts testify for members of Adam's body where incarnate hosts. That's what the sixth day people are. See, they were created inside of Adam in the infinite realm on the day God made him through his word. The other gods, like Adam, incarnated inside of him also. So that's part of the satanic rebellion, all that, the deception and all that. That's how Adam was murdered in the first place because Adam incarnated in all of his brethren and all of his brothers incarnated inside of him. Then the, the people, that in, the gods, like Adam, that incarnated inside of him began interacting with the six-day people. The ones that were in him on the day God made them. That's what we see playing out in scenarios between, well, the Europeans and the, the Indians. Okay, the Spanish Inquisition, for example, that destroyed all kinds of native races. Entire races. That's what happened inside of Adam in the infinite realm. We're only doing things already done. There is no choice here. Choice was made in the infinite realm. This heaven and earth are both the effect realms. Doing things already done. Ecclesiastes 1, start at verse 9. Okay. Next. I guess this question also applies to when all living souls were in the infinite realm with God Almighty, and you were saying that each of the living souls incarnated inside of other. Are they copies? Wouldn't really call Cop, call them copies. No, they are incarnations of you, a God, incarnate inside of your brethren, like your brethren incarnate inside of you. So when you take a look around, you see Seventh day people, you already know them. You know them intimately from the inside. Every Seventh day person that's here, every Seventh day person that's ever going to be here, you're an infinite God in the infinite realm. We all incarnate inside of each other, and we're given different stations, positions of authority of importance in each of our brethren. And the way that you guys incarnate inside of me and the way I arrange you around the table, that's what God rewards us for. That's what gives us our outward appearance. That's different. We're all made perfect. We're all made the same, a template-like. But the way that you incarnate inside of me and I place you around my table makes me an individual. My outward appearance changes based upon the selection process. If I put a bunch of losers at my right hand, I'm a loser. God rewards me accordingly. If I put a bunch of winners in my right hand, God sees that up the mountain of God I go. He rewards me for that. And that's what we do. We don't have HBO, Showtime and stuff in the infinite realm. We all are incarnate inside of each other on an adventure. That's what God's do in the infinite realm. I'm telling you, that's what we do. And even in heaven, we are members of one another. Paul talks about it. Romans 12, start at verse 4. Members of Christ's body and individually members of one another. Even in heaven, we are able to look inwardly at the... It looks like a typewriter ball. You know what a typewriter ball is? I don't even know if they have them anymore. It has all the letters on it and it spins as you're typing. It's a ball. Well, imagine that that's heaven and the big picture on the front is Christ's face, but the little bitty pictures, that's the face of each of our brethren. We are able in heaven to look inwardly and spin that ball and talk to any of our brethren we want to. We're all connected. We're all connected in the infinite realm too. Sounds amazing, doesn't it? But it's true. God showed me, I'm showing you. 
Believe it or not, believe it. I don't care. You believe it or not, believe it. It's going by what God's shown me. So you can absorb so much of it, depending on how mature you are. And you can't, if you're a babe in Christ, you can't, you think that I'm out of my mind. But that's perfectly fine. You can, I've seen enough and am beyond believing. I mean, knowing is way better than having faith in anything. When you know for a fact, God has shown me, I know for a fact. The things that I'm sharing with you right here are true. So does each copy communicate with the other copies? So the question is, does each incarnation communicate with his other incarnations? The general answer for practically all incarnate he uh, hosts in this universe is no. However, like Enoch and the two olive trees from Zechariah 4. Um, however, yeah, with olive trees, yeah, comma. I thought that was a period there. Um, God has a way of making exceptions that will only make sense much later in the timeline when heaven and earth have been remade hundreds of and hundreds of times like in Revelation 21 1 so what you have is an infinite realm that's infinite heaven and earth are like little drops of water and heaven is almost infinite compared to the earth that is a like compared to heaven is a little drop of water so the time differential means that if we could look right into heaven and see Michael the Archangel and the dragon fighting they would be frozen motionless like constellations. They're so big. Creation has to be remade. The heaven and the earth. The new heaven and the new earth. The new heaven and the new earth. Hundreds and hundreds of times. Then God's going to make the earth part bigger. So it's more comparable to the heaven part. And the time differential won't be so gigantic. So that we go, you know, the whole age in this earth before a second passes in heaven. Is the way it is now. Giant differential. Okay. So... Are they, um, are they many copies with one mind? Are the copies real in the sense that they are separate individuals? They must be if they can be killed individually. Crazy questions, I'm sure. There's no such thing as a crazy question. So you're looking at Christ as a mystery jewel, and you're looking through a facet. God shows you things. You've got to testify before I'm going to see those things through your facet. All I'm doing is sharing with you what God has shown me through my facet. It's like looking at a mystery jewel. Lots of facets, lots of faces on it. All of you guys have to testify. We're all going to testify together. That's what the Lamb song is. Your testimony, my testimony, all of us singing the same song, but from our different perspectives. Like hearing a chorus and all the beautiful sounds. We all have to do that. So you're going to have epiphany moments. You're going to grow. We're going to keep doing this through all the ages. We're all going to testify. The Lamb song is going to fill the universe. And then we're all going to see it together. That's the way it works. Just God showed me some of these things first. And now I'm sharing them with you guys. Why we're still in this evil age. That's what makes it special once you realize what we're doing here. So then Gary writes me again. on uh, This morning. And he says, th um, thanks. Uh, I say, thank you for writing. I hope this message finds you doing well. And I'm going to be saying that to a lot of you. Is, my head is just shaking. I can't believe the amount of work that I have. I had to get this done because I promised you I'd get the last mystery report done before the end of the year. And here we are on the 30th. So I um, had to stop the work, my regular work. I'm supposed to be working on the newsletter today, the Black Star newsletter. And I have not even started yet. And it is 1.02 p.m. in the afternoon. I'm going to be way late on getting my work done. But that's the way it goes. Okay. So. Was Lucifer a living soul in the eternal realm? It's helpful to me if you use the phrases that are used in the Mystery Explained that you're reading because there's no reference to an eternal realm. I believe that you're talking about the infinite realm. The thing, when you go into the Greek and you look up the term eternal, you're going to see that the eternal, something that's eternal, has a beginning and an end. Okay? It's a long, 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 long time, but it has a beginning it has an end infinite realm there is no beginning no end there's no such thing as time and space this is where we come from this is the only realm that's real time and space are illusions time and space heaven and earth are created for a purpose the purpose has a beginning the purpose of the ages that i just talked to you about that is the purpose of the ages that's in acts chapter uh, 20 start at verse 24 the purpose of the ages and in a uh, little different phrase in uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 11. Just read 8 through 11. You see the purpose of the ages. This has a purpose. 
that purpose is going to end because Adam is going to be restored. This is his body. This is his soul. This is his spirit. When you turn this upwards, then it's that man of God that I was showing you before. By eternal realm, I'm assuming you mean the kingdom of God in the infinite realm. Over to the far left, that's figure ones. That's where you are gods. Heaven and earth are eternal realms in that they are created. So they have a beginning and an end. The infinite realm is, uh, on the left is the only realm that is real, with heaven and earth being like a matrix. If you saw the movie 13th Floor, okay, the place they go at the very end, the very end of the 13th floor, Douglas Hall, that's comparative to the infinite realm. Where Douglas Hall lived, where he woke up every morning, where he went to the 13th floor to go to work, that's heaven. The 13th floor, circa, what was it, 1927? What was the year? Can't remember. But what was in that machine, where they went to, all right, Douglas Hall went there. That's like the earth. That's a matrix inside of a matrix. Good analogy. If you if you saw the movie The Thirteenth Floor, Douglas Hall lives here. He winds up here, but he travels here. Okay. So this is like a matrix inside of the matrix, basically. Then Lucifer. That's a Latin term. I, that uh, I assume that you're referencing Satan, who is a singularity expression in God's infinite realm, like the word is one with God, the Almighty. Satan's three witnesses in heaven are the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. The devil, the son of perdition, and the false prophet. Those are the characterizations for the earth. So you see, Satan lives here. There is no devil here. No such thing. Devil, son of perdition, false prophet. None of that. Because they're all the same thing. There's no Father, Son, and Holy Spirit here. They're the Word. That's one with God. So, when you go over to this realm, you have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They don't exist here. They were broken out of God's Word. God said, Word, go over there and incarnate. Boom, He did. He was a singularity. Heaven of Genesis 1 1. The Word of John 1 1. But then He had to break His Word because He had to send the light into this broken universe, heaven, heaven, and earth. The only way He could do that is to break His Word. He had to. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is His broken Word. So, when you get down to this realm, you're, getting, you're doing things that have already been done here. And when you get to this realm, you're doing things that's already done here. So, the devil being thrown down into here means that the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet are here. There's no such thing as Satan here. It, the reference to him is to his three witnesses, who are one. It's like God's word. When you're making a reference to God's word, that's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit as one. Okay? But they exist here as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Word made flesh is Jesus Christ. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in one living host. Not a man. He had the appearance as a man. That's why John the Baptist was the greatest born of women because he represents this entire universe. He's another skin for our father Adam. Okay. So, th this is the uh, Latin term that uh, you don't hear, hear me using it. Um, because it's a transliteration, really. It means when you go to the Hebrew, it's going to be your morning star. Okay. So then where uh, were these uh, Isaiah statements by Lucifer and said in his heart, spoken in the eternal realm before the rebellion and, and the killing of Adam? Okay. So you see where the semantics, I'm having trouble here. Because I believe you mean the infinite realm. There's only three realms. The infinite realm where God is, heaven realm, I call it the, word, the realm of the word, or this creation, earth of Genesis 1-1. There's only three realms there are. So the eternal realm would be heaven or earth because they're both eternal. The only one that's real is the infinite realm. Okay, so in the infinite realm is where the rebellion took place. That's where God had the need to keep a secret, which led to the rebellion. And this is where it gets kind of complicated, if it's not already. Okay, I am assuming that your reference to Isaiah 14:4 below is uh, references to Sheol and heaven are to heaven of Genesis 1:8, and Sheol is in the earth of this creation, figure three above. Okay, so we see the dragon thrown down from heaven to the earth, knowing that he has a short time. So we see the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet from Revelation 
three witnesses of Satan in the infinite realm. And they're dealt with there, thrown down into the earth. And they're dealt with here by being thrown into the lake of fire. So when the lake of fire thing is done at the end of the age, that's going to align the time with the dragon being have, being killed and my, with Michael the Archangel the dragon, which then will come in time with God throwing the Satan out of the infinite realm. So he's being cut off from the infinite realm, literally cut off. He's cut off from heaven and thrown down into the earth, and he's cut off here. Separation, that's what death is, separation. It's a separation from God into the lake of fire. So the second death, see, the second separation. Boom, into the lake of fire. He stays there with death, with Hades, with the uh, dragon, I mean, the, the uh, son of perdition, right? And the false prophet, three witnesses. Spirit, blood, water. So he who has wisdom, he will understand 666. See, it's 666 is the number of a man. Who is that man? Do you know? Do you have wisdom? Satan. The six is for the, the devil. The six is for the beast. The six is for the false prophet. All those threes. And there's a diagram in there to show you the 666 and the 777 man. 777 man, Elijah, Christ, Moses. Who represent incarnations of the Lord God of the garden and Adam and Eve. Those are the two olive trees from Zechariah 4, start at verse 11, the two olive trees. They're standing before the Lord of the whole earth all the time. That's what Elijah says. Before the Lord, as sure as the Lord lives before whom I stand, there shall neither be rain or dew on this earth except by my word. Who's the person that says that? Elijah does. It's the same powers of the garden, the cultivator of the land in the garden, Adam. Same exact powers you go to Revelation 11. You're going to read about the two witnesses have the same powers of Adam and Eve. And they look. everybody thinks that it's Elijah and Moses. You know why? Because they are. Elijah is one another skin for our father Adam. And Moses is another skin for our mother Eve, just like Noah is, just like Sarah is, just like Bathsheba is. Whenever you see God's wisdom, you'll see that the, he's teaching us through the types and through the two witnesses, the two olive trees in the garden that are the first and the last that are with him at the Mount of Transfiguration. Same people, same three witnesses of the Mount of Transfiguration are in the garden. Same three. Sounds fantastic, doesn't it? But it's true. So, uh, let's see here. Were these his reasons for the rebellion? I say God had the need to keep secrets from his sons in the infinite realm, leading to the creation of the anointed cherub covers, allowing Satan to obtain all of the highest rewards, giving access to everywhere in the infinite realm until iniquity was found in him. So the satanic rebellion is an infinite realm thing. The battle between the dragon and the Michael is the effect. In other words, the replaying of what happened in the infinite realm all over again. And then what's happening with the with the devil here, the god of this world, is happening for the third time. A replay of what happens in heaven and a replay of what happened in the infinite realm during the satanic rebellion. We're in the only realm that's real. So the satanic rebellion is an infinite realm thing that plays out in heaven and the earth just like everything else. Okay, or was it made after the rebellion in the word realm as an angel? Uh, the standard rebellion was carried out in the infinite realm. That finds Adam murdered and in need of being restored, which is why heaven and earth were created in the first place. See, at some point, you're going to grow into the knowledge that Isaiah 53 is written in the past tense because it's talking about Adam. Christ is going to fulfill part of that. The Lord God has to fulfill part of that. Because Adam can't go to the cross and pay for his own sin. The Lord God has to do that. But when you, Then you're going to realize that the last Adam, that's Christ. The first Adam is the Adam he's sent here to fix. So heaven and earth is all about the restoration of all things, which is the rebuilding of one son of God, one member at a time, each member of his body. When we're walking around and looking at the blue sky, we are members of Adam's body walking around on the earth. When we're in heaven looking up at the sky, we're members of Christ's body. And we're in the infinite realm on the mountain of God, we're members of God's body. The only realm that's real. 
because your incarnation, your life in heaven is an incarnation and your life in this earth is an incarnation. So yes, you're a God in the infinite realm. You're a God there. Right now, you're there. But your life here is an incarnation of a God that's in the infinite realm. That's the reality. And where we are, we're living in a matrix. Neo, we're living in a matrix. And waking up can be hard to do. Now, also, the eternal realm, you teach that there are no angels, only living souls that were gods. And you should, God should be little g here. There's only one God, the Almighty, that made us in the infinite realm. The old, entire realm is his body. We're members of his body. He made us God. We are little g gods. So let's get straight on that. And the Almighty God and the Word was one until after the fall. God and his word are one right now. Heaven is an incarnation. That's a work that the word is doing by the request of the Almighty. The earth is what he remade. God originally made a God in the infinite realm named Adam. And take it a little step further. Eventually, one of these days, you're going to realize that when God made Satan, he had yet to make Adam. Had yet to make him. He had to keep a secret. He made Satan to keep a secret from his sons. Why? We can ask him when we get there. I've deliberated over that for decades, and I don't know the answer to it. We're going to have to ask God when we get back there. Why did you have to keep a secret from us? Why did you have to create Satan in the first place? But once he did make Satan and the rebellion was going, he had to create a savior. So when the scriptures are talking about that he had to send the savior, that's what he's talking about. Because the first Adam and the last Adam are eventually going to be the one, the same thing. That's why one's called the first, one's called the last. That's what Christ says. I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the first and the last. And Paul refers to him as the last Adam for a reason. Because whenever heaven and earth become the same thing, as an incarnation, and steps back into the infinite realm, it's going to be a completed Adam. God's word has no need of being fixed. He's already there. Heaven and earth were created for the purpose of restoring all things. All things is Adam. This universe, there's beside this universe is another universe where you were killed during the Stenic Rebellion. And God has incarnate, his, he's had his word incarnate there to remake your soul. Father, Son, Holy Spirit is going to have all the job and duties of doing that. And then the heavens, heaven, and earth, that's your physical body. And one member at a time. And I'm a member of your body there. And you're the big chicken, like Adam is running around here. Right? So we, there's a universe out there where all of us are the big chicken. And this particular one is where we are speaking from and working within right now as incarnations of gods from the infinite realm. So then he says, he asks, uh, were these statements of Lucifer spoken before the, oh yeah, the eternal realm or after the rebellion, the word realm? And characterizing the, the Satan as a an angel is not actually going to be accurate where Satan is, and, I, and I'm just taking liberties at removing the Latin here and putting them back in the infinite realm of Satan. Okay. There's no such thing as a dragon there. There's no such thing as the devil there. It's all a singularity there. and Which means there's no such thing as an angel there. He's not an angel there. He is the one that covers. He's, he, is, get, he has a purpose. And it's to hide things. And he knows where everything is and it's hidden right in plain sight and we can't see it. Just like you can't see his wisdom. It's hidden right in plain sight. It's plain as day for someone that can see it. I can see it. But I've seen it for decades. And once you see it, you're going to see it. And the next guy next to you won't see it. You point it out to him. And then God taps him on the shoulder and says, hey, I want you to see my wisdom. Boom, you can see it. That's the way this works. He hides it from the sons of disobedience and he shows it to us on a one-by-one -one basis. Just look up the term mysterion and read it slowly. It's dissected in my book, The Mystery Explained. So, um, here I conclude that he was an angel after the rebellion in the word realm. And I go, the heavenly battle between Michael the Archangel and the dragon is a replay of the battle that took place in God's infinite realm, where Satan was thrown down from the infinite realm in the heaven of Genesis 1-1. The dragon is then thrown down from heaven to the earth in the same way to do again what has already been done. Ecclesiastes, you might want to read Ecclesiastes 1, 9-11 three or four times in a row. Just read it. 
let it sink in to realize this is an effect world choices were made in the infinite realm we're doing things that we've already done generally without memory but some do have fleeting images some do have it's like infinite is being poured into a shot glass these epiphany moments it's difficult very difficult to try to explain in human words but some of us have them so the events of this physical realm in the water witness section of the earth from Genesis 1 1 will find the devil the beast and the false prophet thrown in the lake of fire like they were thrown into heaven from the infinite realm and as God threw them down from the infinite realm as Satan the singularity but that conclusion doesn't make sense to me since the scriptures say Lucifer was the number one covering angel Satan was God's anointed cherub who covers things in the infinite realm that's the true realm where for some reason God had to keep a secret so I'm kind of repeating myself here um, if then if Lucifer caused and led the rebellion in the eternal realm which I believe is the infinite realm why would Lucifer be made a covering angel in the word realm if Lucifer was a covering angel in the word realm then who or what caused the rebellion in the eternal realm so it gets a little bit difficult when we're using different terms but the thing to realize here is that there's nothing new under the sun there's nothing new in heaven either because we are all doing things already done in the infinite realm God's realm is the cause realm heaven and earth are the effect realms where things of the spirit are playing out in the soul which is heaven and the body that's the earth within the created envelopes of time and space which time and space are illusions they're not even real from the perspective of the infinite realm that is the only realm that's real the cause of that's like going into the 13th floor program thinking that it's real it feels real looks real while you're there or into the matrix if you're a matrix fan looks real smells real steak tastes good but it's not the only realm that there's a real realm out there and, and uh, that's the infinite realm it's the only one that's real so when Enoch went to walk with God right way back the seventh generation Enoch done he didn't just go to heaven of this realm he didn't just go to heaven of Genesis 1 1 he went all the way back to the infinite realm he's done and the funny part is, is that we're going to live here ages and ages and ages and ages and ages getting all this stuff right, redoing things we've already done, separating the, the sheep and the, the lambs, the, the wolves from the sheep or whatever. And we're going to step back to that, that veil, back to the infinite realm, and it's going to appear like we got there at the same time as Enoch did. Same time. Because of the time differential between heaven and earth that's one of the reasons that he's being put back there he's been sent back there so that we see that holy mackerels we lived all these ages and we he got here a split second before us so that we can see how mighty god really is all of this is happening in the infinite realm in the split second adam murdered boom adam stands back up again split second done it's just all these ages of heaven and earth took place in between so we don't we're not aware of that from our perspective in the infinite realm other than the fact that we're gods and so God's different varying capacity can use their infinite resources to know more than others can if, if that makes sense okay so there was a time when all is fine in God's infinite realm oh he says he's trying to understand the progression of events all is fine in the infinite realm is what he means to present time evil mess up the evil mess today I apologize in advance of my wrong thinking. Hopefully you can straighten me out on this. Thank you in advance for your patience and help. Okay, so there was a time when all is fine in God's infinite realm before God had the need to keep secrets from his sons by creating Satan in the first place. The anointed cherub was lifted above all the sons of God with all precious stones on his chest plate, giving him full access to all the secret places, passageways, inner chambers, hidden from the sons of God very much in plain sight. So God used Satan to hide things from us deliberately, on purpose. These are the things that are going to be removed when we get back to the infinite realm. So God's pride caused, um, God, Satan's pride caused his fall, leading to the lies, deception, the satanic rebellion that led to Adam's death in the infinite realm. That led to the need for, uh, the need to create heaven and earth for restoring Adam in God's infinite realm one member at a time. 
while these things require ages and ages in heaven and earth, that is restored in the flash of a single instant from our infinite realm perspectives. That is why God's infinite realm is frozen motionless for all the ages to come from our teeny heaven and earth perspectives, which is the case right up until we step back through that second veil that separates heaven from God's infinite realm when the ages are complete. That's far as, oh, hour and ten minutes so far. Okay, so Jim, you wrote, pardon me, you wrote me on uh, the 21st, and you got this reply. And then, Karen, you wrote me on October the 1st. That's how long this newsletter's been coming together, this last one. And uh, I hope that's not one of my videos. Really hope it's not. And my apologies for all that happening. I thought I had it. I was making short clips, but I should have known they were going to do that. So here's another one. And then, December the 13th, Ron wrote me the two Gospels, the Kingdom Bride versus the Mystery Body, and the subscription information, and uh, some more information here. And then the local town mayor. He's no longer the mayor. He has written me since. This was from September the 7th. A lot of you guys want to keep up with that. I made a video, and it's now deleted. And I'm heartbroken about that, but... Um, appreciate the, uh, not going to use his first name or last name, the, uh, mayor writing me. Wish you well in your new venture. And uh, I hope that you're able to participate with us in the survival group program here in the Ozarks for those that we leave behind. And, um, that's what I have to share with you for today. The final newsletter. And in case you're, uh, you're thinking about subscribing to the, um, mystery report program then uh, highly recommend, see that's these buttons down here. You get a copy of my book, that you want a copy of my book that is five, I think it's 555 pages and it's the first edition author's copy and it'll be numbered, I think I'm up to number 64. I think, uh, um, yep, because I just, the last one was number 63. That's from the first 100 batch. So if you want one, you can get one right here. Happy to get that to you. That's uh, If you're inside the United States, you're a subscriber, then you can get this for $100. I pay the shipping. And then uh, whenever you subscribe, even if you just go to the mystery report, that gives you access to the newsletters that are in there. All the ones from 2019, which is only five, then those from this year, there's going to be 20. Those are all going to go into the 2021 Dropbox folder. So when you subscribe, you're, you, you don't get around to subscribing to 2021. You're still going to have access to all of the mystery reports. There's a breadcrumb trail. And luckily, on, the, on a different YouTube channel, one that's still there. So, thank God for that part. There's one good, shiny um, aspect to, I mean, to, there's, a, there's a silver lining to what all this stuff has happened to me here recently. And, uh, like I said, these four videos are still here. And, uh... I will be doing my best to get all the links going the best that I can and I uh, wanted to get this last number 20 uploaded now I, I'm going to be behind getting my black star stuff done but that's just the way it goes appreciate your support very very much you're going to get more information right here at the website and uh, reason well I, over on YouTube I can't even say anything about trying to help you with these other things but anyway appreciate your support very very much and um I'll see you on the next mystery report. And I'm trying. My January is terrible for me without losing all the videos. Though I'm likely not going to be able to get all the videos on this website fixed until February. Because there's more subscribers this year than ever before. More new subscribers and everything. It's going to take forever. It might take me to the 31st of the month to get all that done. Then I'm going to remake the videos just as fast as I can while servicing you guys with your needs every day. And answering your emails to do, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm swamped, and um, I'm doing, I'm just doing the best I can. Appreciate you guys' support very, very much, and I'll see you on the next uh, missed report.